Hello, I am Diana Turney, and I'd like to thank you for joining me in the first of our four lessons regarding steps in exit planning, considerations that you might like to take as a farmer, rancher, and forestry property owner. And so in so doing, we'd like to say a special thanks to the soil and water conservation districts in Clackamas, East Multnomah, and Tualatin. These folks want to sponsor and help you gather information so you can make the decision most appropriate to you. Let's get started. First things first, your next chapter is so important. What you choose to do, what you've been dreaming, or what you prefer to do, that is very important. In order to make this work, you need to spend time on this before you're actually at that point in your life. You need to test it out to make sure it is going to work. And that means, as an example, I mentioned earlier in the initial overview, I had a gentleman that had a boat. In fact, his dream was to have a large a sailboat. And he sold his farm and bought that. Well, after two years, he was back in my office saying, how do I buy my farm back? This is not what I realized it would be. It was okay for a while. Well, perhaps that is what you are going to find in your next chapter. Is it something you're prepared to do long-term? or it's only something you want to taste for a while. Only you know that and preparing for that will help you. There are also gonna be people along the way, not just your immediate family, perhaps heirs, your customers, your vendors, key employees. There are many people in the community and others who care about you and you care about them. You're gonna to need to spend some time on what your future looks like with them. Another consideration is the legacy. Is your property a legacy? Is it something that has been passed down from many generations? Or is it something that you are the first property owner or the second? Not quite as long, but vitally important to you and the people closest to you. If that's the case, it is a legacy and you're gonna take different steps to protect it if it is a legacy. And finally, this one is very important. Is it a business? Of course it is. Make no mistake about it. Your agricultural enterprise is a business. And what matters most is what's next, which is business structures. Structures enable a transition and they also can create a havoc if they are not correct. There are different tax laws and protections of not really much if you are a sole proprietor. In fact, the IRS tells you you can't sell yourself. That will have a dramatic impact on your transition and what you like to do and potentially bring it to a halt. To avoid that, you might find that you will be setting up one or more structures that are more easily transferable and they protect the assets that are so important in your farm and ranch enterprise. Sometimes it takes more than one. Sometimes it takes multiple. I had a farmer who had five parcels and he had five children. The decision that he made was to actually make each parcel an LLC. And as he transitioned, that parcel became owned by one of his children. That's only one option, but it's something that I saw and it worked very well. Ownership can also be a key consideration at the end of the day, who is going to own the transition that you're trying to take care of? Who is going to own that property, the various assets and everything you've worked for? It doesn't have to be equally shared with everyone. And we will discuss that more in the family dynamics section. But I want to begin helping you see what would you like to accomplish if the most important thing to you is seeing the legacy of your farm and ranch continue into additional generations, there are steps you can begin taking now, and I think you will enjoy the outcome. In doing this, you are going to define the roles and responsibilities. Right now, you probably do most or all of them. You're going to need to take those apart, and in my diagram, I show you doing that. You're going to need to think about what you do now. It's probably second nature, but 
you need to have that very clearly defined and evaluate who is going to take that over, when, and any steps that are necessary to make it possible, and then assign that responsibility. For instance, maybe you have a line of credit in your business and you sign for it at the beginning of each year or two. You have great credit. The bank knows you very, very well. Well, what's going to happen when an unknown individual comes into the picture, like your heir? Give some thought to how things have to be put in place now to make the transition smooth for everyone involved. I help you begin this process with something called a dare to dream exercise. It is a tool in your workbook that I ask you to go through. In fact, I ask you to spend quite a bit of time on it. Over the next few days, I hope you will take that, take a pencil and begin putting down your thoughts. You probably won't want to do it all at once. I wouldn't. I would break it apart and do a few questions at a time. After you reflect on things, you might come back and change some things or add. You will also identify as part of this exercise what you need, not just financial, but there can be other aspects. For instance, can you age in place? Do you perhaps need help with transportation or help on the farm now, even if your heirs are not able to return and begin as quickly as you need? All of these can be addressed once you identify them. The next one I'd like to spend a little more time on, and that's relationships. You have so many relationships baked into this enterprise, and they're all very critical. I'll give you an example of where a family missed the boat, literally, when they thought about this. I had a husband and wife who owned a farm, and they made the decision to sell. Their kids were not going to move back. They had very strong ties to their community. Their neighbors loved them. They got together all the time and did activities, and they just saw that continuing into their next chapter after they got through some travel and other things they would like to do. As a result, they made the decision to sell their property to the highest bidder. What happened next, this is something I hope you all will want to avoid. They didn't take into consideration the buyer that was coming into play now. Before long, things were very difficult with neighbors. This was an individual that decided to build multifamily homes, build warehouses right next to agricultural properties. Imagine being a wheat farmer and having a dairy operation and right next door is a 1,250 unit multifamily dwelling. Wow, things did not go well. Well, they came back after a few months of enjoying many of the things they wanted to do periodically and thought, let's buy a home in town. And then that can be our home base and we move from there. And let's get back to our friends and talk with them. They were shunned at the grocery store. They were shunned at church. And what happened is those relationships were broken because of the decisions they made. So that was important to them and they didn't realize how important. In fact, that couple ended up very quickly selling their home and moving away because they had no relationships left that were worth preserving. So give some thought to what relationships you would like to keep intact and how you're going to keep them on an ongoing basis. Preferences and wishes are also part of this Dare to Dream exercise. There are things you would like to see happen and maybe you have wishes. These are things that you have in the back of your mind and you're very hopeful. This is a great opportunity to put them down and people can give you ideas on how you might accomplish some or even all of them but no one can help you if they don't fully know. The next exercise that I give you is an overview where you describe the various aspects of your enterprise, your property, who owns what, parcels, who works on them, even the history. Let's think about the parcel for a moment. Perhaps that parcel is something that was passed down. Maybe great grandpa owned it, and his name was on the deed of trust, and then he passed it on to one of his children. And before long, it came into your hands. Well, you just continued through the years, everyone paid the property taxes, and there was no change on the deed of trust. And lo and behold, you find there are some very significant tax consequences because that never got reported as a transaction. Things like that are not uncommon. 
And so this is a time for you to shore up any outstanding issues before they can become a surprise. And parcels also have other restrictions and they also have other rights that are granted to them. Do you really know what your description says? History in your farm and ranch does matter. Please take time to record this, not only to share with other generations, but it helps people understand you better and how to help you achieve what you would like to do. Your business information, most people, this is only the financials and perhaps those tax returns that you've gotten filed year after year. The truth is, it's much more than that. In fact, it includes the operational aspects of your business. And this is really the secret sauce of what you do. Who helps you, perhaps seasonal labor or certain activities that you do when you prune, when you do things with your herd, what you put on the ground, crop rotations. And anyone who has livestock knows what I'm talking about when you're dealing with breeding cycles and making sure that you're preserving the integrity of your herd. And perhaps you have certain sires and dams that you need to make sure remain separate. So this is all something you may know, but as part of the transition, that needs to be clearly communicated and shared. You also, in many cases, have employees. They are important. And so bringing them into the process along the way is important, and you can do that. They may or may not be heirs. Some of you have key employees that become heirs. In fact, they might be family. Whatever the case may be, putting down what your wishes are and who is important in these various aspects of your transition, important place to start. If you have any uncertainties, what a great time to put those down. Maybe you have some things that give you reason to pause. You need to think about it a little more. There's nothing wrong with that. And I wanna encourage you to take the time to make really a good decision. Your enterprise is composed of assets and there are personal assets and there are business assets. Many times in farm and ranch properties, I find the lines blur and things are a little muddy. Sometimes it never got put on the asset listing for the business because you paid for it personally. It was gifted. Whatever the case may be, a full detailed listing of assets so that someone can help you with evaluation is critical. And it's not necessarily what you paid for it. We're not trying to deal with the IRS right now. We're trying to deal with fair market value. What it is worth if you went into the marketplace or it were valued by an appraiser today. That goes into your overall estate value. And so we have to put that together in order to help you have a will that you know who gets what and when and at what juncture they're going to get it. The contacts that you see listed, we wanna make it easy for you to contact the Soil and Water Conservation District. And so some of your properties may cover more than one county and we can help you make sure you have those contacts. But please take note of this. And when you make the contact, let these folks know I'm an agricultural enterprise owner and it's so important that I get help and get connected with you people as soon as possible. They're eager to work with you and they're experts in their field. It's really enjoyable to work with these folks and I can't say enough about them. It's been my privilege to work with them. I do know that exit planning takes time. This is something that has been very clear to me over the years. So you want to explore and implement and make this work. Getting started now gives you the greatest number of options and you can learn what's available with the local Soil and Water Conservation District and other members of your review team. I'd like to now take you over to the next two very brief video segments where we look at these workbook tools I've talked about here. Thank you again.